Before we get into this video, I want to go ahead and put a very clear disclaimer at the beginning for anyone who may be new to this channel. This video is either an update for my Pan That palette, which heavily features a Jeffree Star Cosmetics palette, or it is a video in which I am using products from companies I no longer support. There's been a lot of long overdue drama happening in the beauty community along with the supposed cancellation of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. I did a live stream where I really put together all of my thoughts on kind of the most recent drama, though probably most of it is out of date. I'll throw it up in the cards if you want to hear my full long drawn out thoughts. But at the end of the day, I do not support Shane Dawson, I do not support Jeffree Star, and I don't support quite a few makeup brands at this point. Back when I did buy these products, I was interested in the makeup and I was trying my best to do what a lot of other creators can do, which is separate the art from the artist. I did my best to do that, but then I realized that I recognized a line and that once uh, a company or a creator or a person or a celebrity crossed that line, I could not support it and I couldn't separate the makeup from the company or the makeup from the owner or the art from the artist. and. It took a lot of reflection to get to that point. I reached that conclusion and I realized I had to apply that across the board. I couldn't pick and choose which celebrities, which influencers I was going to support and not support based on their actions and then their company's actions. So I had to apply that across the board. So as of now, I currently own quite a few Jeffree Star Cosmetics uh, makeup products. I also have a few from other brands I no longer support, but that's basically the gist of this. And I don't want to advocate throwing away products that you've already bought, you've already spent the money. I want to advocate reflecting on your own actions and reflecting on how you move forward. So I advocate for using up uh, products from problematic people, problematic brands, using them up and then decluttering them and never purchasing from the brand again. I've seen a lot of people immediately take down their past support videos for these brands. I'm keeping mine up, not because I'm like making a lot of money on them. I usually make less than a dollar a video, but I want to leave them up so that you have a clear picture of where I came from. Because I did start out as someone who did their best to separate art from the artist so that I could enjoy makeup, which is a terribly shallow and horrible thing to do. Like we, these people, of which I used to be one of them, would excuse all of these behaviors or try to ignore these behaviors in order to what? In order to what? Enjoy some YouTube videos, in order to have some pretty makeup. It's not like we have a shortage of makeup here, right? We have anti hauls and we have B-Wows that tell us there's so much makeup coming out every day. So that's what I advocate for. So I just want to go ahead and put this in the beginning of any video moving forward. If it's a Pan That Palette update or if it's any other video where I heavily feature um, a product from one of those brands. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if this gets repetitive, but I do want to make that very loud and clear, especially in light of recent events. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing the finally, the finale for my 2020 Pan That Palette, the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blood Sugar Palette. Ooh, so I've got a lot I want to get through. I just want to do like my final thoughts, and I got a really great comment on my last update video with a bunch of questions just about uh, panning a palette in the first place and like tips and tricks, so I also want to go through that and answer those questions as well. So before I get into it, let's go ahead and for the last time, run the slideshow of my progress with this palette up until this point.
All right, and to be honest, not much difference. This is the palette finale. There is absolutely nothing left in the packaging itself. And to be honest, I am just so <laughs> excited to recycle this. And here in my custom palette, this is everything that I have left. This isn't, of course, all from the blood sugar. I did mix a lot of these shades. Like this purple shade has some other purples from different palettes. I know some Juvia's play some ABH. These have some other face powders in them. But overall, I was able to create a lovely face palette that I've been using daily. So like I mentioned, I am using this palette daily. I am wearing it for the majority of my face makeup today, my bronzer, my contour, and I love this purple blush. You can see it doesn't really show up that like stark or bright or anything, but it's just a really pretty undertone. It's been my favorite blush for a while now. So I'm really happy that I chose this palette. Honestly, I mentioned this previously, but this was like the perfect shit show palette for like the shit show year that was 2020. But I'm glad that I did it. It was a challenge, definitely. I had never really incorporated such red and purple tones into everyday use, which is kind of what I had to do in order to like hit pan in every shade, because I hit pan in the majority of the shades first before I repressed everything. But I'm glad I picked it and I'm glad that I didn't try to stick to my original goal. Because if you remember the beginning of this um, journey, I really just wanted to have the pretty palette with, with the pan in every single pan, you know, pan in every one. And it just didn't work out that way. And I'm glad it didn't work out that way. It's a little bit harder to like trace progress in like the last few updates that I had, but overall I am so much happier with this custom face palette that I got to make. I got to like dupe face palettes that I wanted. I didn't have to spend any more money on them. I got to be creative and it's a product. I'm using this face palette every day and I don't have to like look at this every day <laughs> and I was able to, I keep going and and and, but I was able to also mix it with some other shadows and some other formulas and find something that just was like perfect for me. So I'm just so happy that I was able to go from like this shitty person's palette that I felt horrible for like putting aside morals to buy and then transforming it into a face palette that I love and enjoy and use daily. So yes, for the other two pan that palettes that I have, the Marc Jacobs and the Subculture palette, I keep the empty palettes because I like having them on display. This is getting recycled today. <laughs> and the packaging, I can't wait to get rid of it. In addition to that, today is the day I finally get rid of the rest of the Jeffree Star products in my collection. I did declutter all of these, mainly lipsticks and highlighter that I had pan in, in my last declutter series. If you missed that, I'll throw it up in the cards. I feel like I really talked through all of my thoughts on Jeffree Star cosmetics and ethics when it comes to makeup consumption, but I'm glad I'm at this point because before I was like, oh, like, I got to the point where, like, I kind of wanted to keep the products because I'd spent so much money on them. But then I realized, what's the point if A, I'm never reaching for them, B, I don't want to promote them, so I'm not using them, and they're just gathering dust and going bad. So, um, I actually am glad I did technically pan the highlighter. There is pan in the middle, so I'm really glad that I at least got use out of it before I just, you know, throw that out. And the lipsticks, I think most of them actually went bad. Um... Uh, Ooh, yeah, that actually doesn't smell that great. So uh, the lipsticks went bad, so we're getting rid of those. The last palette that I had was Blue Blood, which um, I did just declutter to a cousin of mine. That's a lie. I have one more palette left, that Thirsty one, but I already decluttered that, and odds are, once we move, I really want to start a either a Poshmark or a Depop. I want to sell that one, because I barely used it, and it was limited edition, so at least I could get a little bit of money back on that one. So I'm really happy I did this. I learned so much. I learned so much and I'm glad it turned out different than I was kind of expecting it to. And it was it was so much different from my first two palettes that were a little bit more of a traditional project. Whereas this one, I was able to like explore the nuances of the drama as it folded out throughout the year and then 2020 as it unfolded out. It's just, like I said, I don't know if I, I no one could have predicted 2020, but I feel like ultimately this was the perfect project for this year. So that being said, let me switch over to the comment that was left. This was left by Earthly Beauty on my last update, and I just, I loved the questions that she had. So if you're looking for any, or at least these are what has work, worked for me. So my advice, my thoughts on panning, specifically when you're trying to pan a whole palette in a year. 
So Earthly Beauty said, I would love to hear a wrap up of your year long project pan that palette experience, including some tips. I have many eyeshadow palettes I would love to focus on using up and getting out of my collection, but when I tried, I got burnt out real quick. Yep, that's that happens to all of us. <laughs> so first question is, did you use the palette exclusively for your eye looks the entire year? No. So um, I keep so I have an everyday makeup basket I have a whole playlist of my everyday makeup baskets the consistent part of that basket that never changes and stays in there all year or not all year the majority of the year is my pan that palette so what I do is at first like at the very beginning of the year and you'll see this with my next pan that palette and like throughout January I will experiment and try to focus on doing eye looks with that palette I don't 100% focus on that palette just because like I have a large collection and I want to use the rest of my palettes, but it definitely helps if you do for the majority of your eye looks. Like if you do makeup every day, that's another thing. It helps if you do makeup often. It's going to be a lot harder to pan a palette when you're only doing your makeup two or three times a week. I wear makeup six to seven days a week. So using that, using palettes six to seven days a week, if I've got seven days a week of makeup, I want to make sure we're at the very beginning of the project at least, at least four of those days I'm using my pen that palette. At least four or five. And then I can experiment, or I don't even just have to use a palette by itself. I can do a lid, or you can pull shades in from other palettes. So you don't have to use that palette by itself, but if you're trying to pan a palette in a year, you do have to like make it your main focus for a good portion of what you're doing your makeup for. So to answer that question, no, it wasn't just the blood sugar palette for eye looks. I incorporated a lot of other palettes. And one of my first tips too is I like to focus on eye looks for like the first month or two of having a palette. But really the way you use up palettes or the way that I found easiest to use up palette is to multitask. <laughs> What shades can you use as face powders? What shades can you use in your eyebrows? That helps me pan a lot of dark shadows because I can just use them in my eyebrows every day. Uh, what shades can you use as liners? Uh, multitasking. Because if you're trying to pan something that's like got a lot of product in it and you're only using it for eyeshadow, odds are it's going to take you a long time. Next question was, did you genuinely enjoy the palette enough that you didn't get tired of it? Nope, there, there was quite a few times where I got tired of it, but that's where the multitasking comes in to help. Because then I'm not just using it for eye looks, because you could just, especially when I was using up some shades and you were just down to where you could only really get so many eye looks out of it. Yeah. Um, it might have been the neutral color story that made me sick of it after a while, but I can't be too sure. Did you give yourself permission to use something else when you got bored? Absolutely. I believe in this project there was actually a full three weeks where I, like, towards the midway point, I think like in August, I put the palette away because it was just getting too much and I wanted to use other stuff. I try to keep the palette, like I said, within arm's reach of my vanity. So that temp, like day to day to day, I'm tempted to just reach for that first. That's another tip that helps. If you have a vanity or wherever you do your makeup, try to keep your palette there so that it's just always there so that you're always tempted to reach for it at least once every time you do your makeup. Did you ever feel like giving up on it throughout the year? I, I got tired of the palette every now and then, but I never, wanted to give up on it because I was dedicated to the project because that's one thing it is a long it's a year-long project I've done it I think the first time I did a pan that palette I chose a very neutral palette and that one kind of got a little bit boring but once you've done it once and you see the progress through a playlist or through pictures it's kind of thrilling to have a completed project and then to look back and see what you've learned through that project so I knew I was never going to give up <laughs> I didn't think I might hit my goal I was worried about that because I wasn't sure whether or not I would actually hit pan or use up the whole palette. But um, I didn't want to give up. And I think it's something you have to like see what kind of panning project would best fit you. Like, do you want to do a year long? Do you think you could stay dedicated to a year long project? Or is a shorter project better for you? Maybe it would be best to do like a three month, a six month focus maybe on like half a palette or just a couple of shades first and then build your way up to doing a full year long project. Oh, in the last sentence, she said, I just want to be as successful as you were. I've hardly ever hit pan on an eyeshadow, let alone use up an entire palette. And I know you have done so multiple times, so I would love to know your secrets. Thank you. So those are all my big tips. Um, try to use it as often as you can whenever you're doing your makeup. It helps if you're doing your makeup multiple times a week. I do my makeup basically daily. <sighs> Multitasking the shadows because you definitely need to find more ways to use those shadows if you want to use up a whole palette and giving yourself permission to bring in other palettes to use with it or just take a break from it every now and then to use other things. 
Also, finding people that inspire you to keep going. So my favorite channels to follow for panning um, are LS, and she's no longer posting right now, but I go back and watch her old videos sometimes, Thrifty Beauty. So I'll have both of those channels linked down below in some of my favorite of their projects, because um, it definitely helps, especially if you're jumping on and you're doing a project that some other people are doing. Like recently, we had the HP Project Pan. That's a fun way to get involved, meet other people, and then do a project like that together. So I hope those tips help you out, and if you want to see any other tips, check out those channels. I believe LS has done videos specifically like on panning tips, and I know I binge watched all of those at some point, so I'll also include a couple of those down below. So that is it. I can't believe we're finally done. No more disclaimers. I got the Jeffree Star stuff out of my collection, and I'm so happy with how this project went. Tomorrow will be the introduction for my brand new 2021 Pan That Palette, and I cannot wait to share that with Errol. And I cannot wait to share that with all of you guys. So thank you guys so much for everyone who came along on this journey with me. Let me know down below how your 2020 Pen That Palette went and what you think my 2021 palette may be. And if you've already picked yours for 21, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.